There are an awful lot of iPhones out there, and I've been wondering what do people do with them when they're done using them? Do they just throw them out, or maybe they try to resell them on marketplaces like Mercari, where you can buy and sell almost anything, especially iPhones. And if you're like me, you may want to know how to make money from this site if you're a buyer or seller, and you would therefore need access to the raw data behind all these products on Mercari. The only problem is there's not an official Mercari API to fetch this data from. If you Google, you'll find a couple random sites with server errors, and you'll find some unofficial GitHub repos with code you can use that will try to access and scrape the site unofficially. However, you'll notice that Mercari will ban IP addresses if they try to do this. They've already banned all of Amazon EC2, so if you use one of these software tools, odds are you may get in trouble and get yourself banned. And you would most likely be violating the Mercari terms of services, which can get you in legal trouble. So then how are we supposed to access raw data behind Mercari? Like if we want to buy and sell things in their marketplace, we would be better off if we could collect some raw data about the market for the products we're trying to buy or sell. For example, if I'm interested in iPhones, I may want to get an overall sense of the market so I can know how age affects the price for the iPhone as well as the condition and capacity in the model of the iPhone. Am I better off trying to buy and sell newer or older iPhones? If I do have a newer iPhone, does condition or capacity make a bigger difference on price? In the rest of this video, I'm going to show you how you can scrape data from Mercari safely and legally by just using their website normally. This will work best if you only need the data for one-time analysis or on an infrequent basis, like weekly or monthly. This does not cover automated access, which probably violates their terms of service. I'm gonna show you how to do this using a freemium tool that disclaimer I own, and I'm gonna show you how to do it using the paid tier, but there's also a free tier that you may find useful. And then we're gonna do an analysis on this data specifically for the used market for iPhones, and I'm gonna show you exactly how price and condition, capacity and age can affect the pricing in the used iPhone market on Mercari. You can skip towards the end if you don't care about the scraping and just wanna see my data analysis. Check out the timestamps. In order to scrape Mercari legally, we're gonna to go to the site and use it normally. And we're gonna browse the categories and let's check out cell phones and smartphones. And this technique will work with any category you're interested in scraping. So here you can see all the products in the category, and this includes both Apple and Samsung products, but I only want iPhones, so I can use any of these filters here. I'm just gonna pick Apple, and that should filter this down to only iPhones, and you can pick whatever filters you need for your specific use case here. Once you have the products loaded, we're going to do something called network traffic inspection. Just right click on the page and hit inspect on whatever major browser you're using, then check out the network tab, and you'll see all of the raw data that Mercari is gonna to send to our browser as we use it in full accordance with their terms of service. And as we keep scrolling down through the results, Mercari is gonna keep sending us more and more data. And we can check out one of these requests here to see what data they sent us and the URL that we used. So we can see the URL here is pretty complicated. It looks like they built it to prevent automated scrapers like the GitHub repos we saw from unofficially accessing their site. Like I said, we're not gonna try doing that. We're just gonna be using the site normally, but paying attention to the data they send us as a result of our normal usage. And we can see the search results here, one of the iPhones from the second page, and we can see the description as well as the condition, the title of it, and most importantly, the price. So if we're looking for arbitrage opportunities, we can find it in this raw data. And we can see there are plenty of other search results here in this one response set. But if we wanna get more results, we need to keep scrolling on the page and I'm gonna monitor my network traffic here to show you the next page that comes in. So you'll see as it loads, Mercari will send the next batch of results into our browser and we can check it out by sorting by size and we can see that we get another set of results. So to get as many results as possible, we simply need to sit here and keep scrolling. And while I'm sure there are Chrome extensions that can do this for you, I'm not gonna advocate that due to terms of services and I'm just gonna manually use the website so there's no violation or automated access of Mercari. And yes, I did sit here for a good 10 minutes and literally scrolled here until I got to the end. And here in the network tab, we can see all of the individual responses Mercari sent to our browser containing JSON data of all the results. So the issue here though is how do we get all these files into one place where we can appropriately analyze the data in bulk? Well, to do that, we can use the HAR file export here, which mostly all browsers support. Just click export HAR, and then here I'm gonna save a HAR file to my desktop, which is going to save all of these individual requests, but into one large file so we can extract the structured data out of it. 
Once you have your HAR file, you see that it's quite big and a little bit difficult to process on your own. That's why I offer this freemium tool here, link in the description, that can parse this HAR file and get all the valuable data out of the Mercari web traffic. All you do is drag and drop a file here, and this free tool will analyze the file and group together all of the common pagination requests to get all these iPhones here into one group, making it extremely easy for you to just click and download all of the 32 requests raw data. So I can click this icon and I'll see the raw JSON data from that request. So if you're technical, you can import these files and process them if you'd like. However, we still have the problem where we want to combine all these 32 files into a nice easy CSV file or something which is why premium CFC data users will see this parse button up here, which will do just that and auto magically combine all of these 32 JSON files into flattened CSV collections. I can then download and open in Excel and I can see that it combined nearly a thousand results together in one big file. And once we have this CSV file, we can move it up to Google Drive so we can look at it in Google Colab, which lets us run Python code and run this in a Jupyter notebook so we can take a closer look at our data and make some conclusions about the iPhone marketplace on Mercari. So here we can check out the raw data and this will look just like our CSV file. We can see the title of each item here in each row. And then if we scroll a little bit, we'll see some more information like the price and the condition. Here they put the price in cents, so we'll need to divide this by 100 to get actual US dollars. And we can also see the condition, which I'm curious to see how that affects price, especially as the phones age over time. So what I'm going to do next is kind of create a cleaner data frame or table of all these results. And I want to extract the raw data out of here, like the model and the capacity for each of these rows. So I'm going to use a regex expression to extract each of these. It's not that complicated and you'll see how it's done in the next step. So here I'm going to create a new data frame called iPhones that'll contain just clean data. That's easy to comprehend here. And now I'm going to get the title by going to the raw data and here I'm going for the column name that has the titles here with the iPhone information and I'm gonna lowercase everything, just to make it a little bit easier. Now I'm gonna get the model, I'm gonna use a regex expression here under extract, I'm gonna look for iPhone and then a space, and then any character until I get to a stopping character which will be like another space, meaning I get to the end of the model number or a weird character like a plus or a P or a dash so see here it goes iPhone, space, and then it gets any character until it hits a stop character like space. So it'll extract seven for this case. Then here it will get XS because there's a space after the XS. This will then take that extracted value and because it's in these parentheses here, we'll extract it out and put it in the new column model. And we can do the same here for capacity where I'm going to look for some digits with an optional space and then a G and then maybe a B because sometimes I put in G or Giga or GB for gigabytes and then all the characters until we get to the end of the string to make it greedy from the end. So we'll see here that we have a few options where we'll pick up the 128 and then there's no space in this case when we have GB and then it just skips all the stuff until it gets to the end of the string. And I'm just gonna convert it to an integer to make it easy to work with. Same here with price, it gets the price which is an integer of cents divides by 100 to get dollars and we're also gonna get the condition because I'm interested in that. I analyzed the values and I removed a lot of these weird or four values and then to get the release year to see how old these iPhones are, I went and got the release year for each of these model numbers. And you'll see some years where Apple released two different models. I put the most expensive one as the dot one version and the cheaper one as the dot zero. So we can imply that sort of as the iPhones get later, they're more expensive and more current. And then here I'm just going to go through the model that we extracted with the regex and assign it to the release year here by looking it up in this dictionary. And I'm gonna add a few more columns here so I can keep track of what's available in what condition. So here, if it's like new condition, I'll put a one in that column, otherwise a zero. So I can sum each column up where I wanna see the total count for new, good, fair, or poor condition. And here I can see my results. I have the release here for everything, the condition, and most importantly, the capacity and model were extracted from the title and it all looks good. The first thing I wanna ask myself is, well, what's the availability of each iPhone model and I want to sort it by the year released. So I want to see that there are probably a lot more recent iPhones, iPhone 12s available than iPhone 11s, XS's, etc. So we can use this function here and it's going to graph everything and it's going to sum the counts by condition. So we can break this down and see also within each model if it's like new condition, good, fair, or poor condition. And here are my results. So I can see I was wrong. The iPhone 12, there's actually not very many available, only 15 out of roughly a thousand. I can see most of them are in like new condition. 
most of the recent iPhones available are iPhone 11 or iPhone XS, one or two years older, and those phones, most of them are only in good condition, not like new. And the majority of the phones are iPhone 7s for some reason, and there's a ton of 6 and 6s. Anything below that though, there's really very few available. We can see there's under 10 each available for anything older than an iPhone 6, probably because Apple software doesn't support them anymore and they're officially vintage. And we can see here with a condition, very few say they're like new and most of them just say they're in good condition. So now the next thing I wanna do is check out the price based on the model. So the same graph above, but I just wanna look at the average overall price and here I expect to see things decrease. So the most recent iPhone will be the most expensive like I mentioned before, but we'll see if we go one year older, two years older, it starts decreasing, but at a decreasing rate. So we see the biggest jump between the current model and last year, and the difference seems to get lower each year. What's incredible though is the iPhone X and XR are roughly the same price, and the XR is an economy version of the XS, so it's holding its value. And these older phones really are pretty cheap, and what's weird is that the second generation iPhone is actually commanding a premium, maybe because it's an antique or a vintage that's hard to get, but not by much. And the other thing I wanna look at is what condition is the phone? Does it make a big difference if your phone is in like new condition or good condition? And are people more sensitive to these conditions in recent phone models or older phone models? So here we're using some Python magic to reproduce this graph, but we're gonna break down the prices by condition and use a line graph instead. So we're gonna see different lines as the phone's age for like new, good, fair, or poor conditions on our graph. And we see the same depreciation happen, that sorts of decays the most in the first couple of years, then sort of gets better and better. And we see the green line is for like new condition and the orange line is in good condition. So there's not much of a price difference for a very recent phone, maybe because it hasn't had time to really get beat up yet. But I can see here in the next recent model that there's a big difference between fair and good condition. So if you're trying to sell a one or two year old iPhone, you definitely need it in good condition if you want to command the premium. But as we get older and older, people don't really seem to care as much if it's in like new, good, or fair condition. The price just seems to get lower irrespective of condition. And lastly, I can't forget about capacity. So now I'm gonna group these by model and also capacity and sort them by the release year and then capacity. So this will group together all the same models like iPhone 12, but in descending order by capacity. So we can definitely see here the higher capacity phones command a premium within their groups. So I can see same for iPhone 11 that has a major price premium over the mid-range model in terms of capacity. So it seems that buying the higher capacity iPhone may actually be a worthwhile investment if you plan on selling it within a recent time frame. But as we go down here and look at the older phones, we see that it doesn't make much of a difference anymore. When you're buying an older phone, it doesn't really seem to make a difference in price, except there are a few exceptions where I can see that people really don't want the 32 gigabyte model, so they're willing to pay more for the 64 or 128 for some of these older models here. Well, I hope you learned a lot about the used iPhone market, and if you plan on selling your iPhone, it's best to do it within, say, the first two years of it being released, and keep it in good to like new condition, otherwise, as we saw, the price will plummet. Please like if you learned something. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to cover more videos on Mercari or similar APIs and websites, and subscribe so you don't miss that content when it comes out. Thanks so much for watching, stay amazing, and stay data-driven.